Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We are getting started with the next chapter which is chapter 4 ML and it's about the data what we will be talking about in this chapter. The data of course plays a vital role uh, which we have understood so far and in this chapter we'll be trying to deep dive everything uh, about what you need to know about data in terms of 4.1 data preparation as a part of the ML workflow, 4.2 training, validation, and test data sets in the ML workflow, 4.3 the data set quality issues, 4.4 data quality and its effect on the ML model, and finally data labeling for supervised learning. So put together whatsoever we might have used as a terminology so far, we'll be deep diving into that with more explanation and understanding what does that mean. So the, talking about the very first thing 4.1 data preparation as a part of the ML workflow is slightly big topic and we will be breaking that into two parts. So this is the part one of 4.1 data preparation. All right, to get started, of course, uh, we are talking about data preparation, which is in general means that talking about collecting all that sort of information, what you really need to have in order to train an ML model. Of course, uh, so far we have understood the criticality and significance of having the right data set to train our ML model. If in case you go wrong with the invalid set of data or go wrong with the right and appropriate data set what is required of course you can expect an ml model to deviate from the desired outputs or certainly give you inaccurate results and that's where the data preparation is a major step as a part of the ml workflow which certainly makes a lot of sense to ml model and the desired success rate of your ai based system now data preparation of course uses an average of 43 percent of ml workflow effort and is probably the most resource intensive activity in the workflow now of course 43 percent is not a small number when it comes to uh, talking about the ml workflow which is the overall workflow of preparation of an ml model and 43 percent of effort is being utilized in just data preparation that means it's more of like you spend most of your time in the workflow in preparing the most appropriate data set which the ML model will be using to get trained on. Now, in comparison, the model selection and building uses hardly 17% and data preparation forms part of the data pipeline which takes the raw data and outputs data in the form that can be used to both train an ML model and for prediction by a trained ML model. That means we can separate out these set of data, whatever you collect and prepare for training as well as validation, right? So we do have concepts of talking about validating data sets or testing data set, which we'll be talking in the upcoming sections. Now data preparation can be considered to comprise of the following activities. In a major note, we have first of all data acquisition. We do have data pre-processing and we have feature engineering. So today we'll be talking about data acquisition and data pre-processing and rest we'll talk about uh, in the next segment. So the very first thing here is data acquisition, which considers three major phases again. Number one is identification, then we have gathering, and third is labeling. So Identification, of course, is the first and prior most activity that you need to identify the right set of data. What exactly do you need to have? Of course, preparation is something which you will do after you have identified what exactly do you need. <laughs> so most importantly, if I'm looking forward to buy a kind of book, then I need to first understand what I'm looking forward to read. And then I will go ahead and look forward to that segment that whether they have such books or not. And that's the same thing here. Identification is always the foremost step which allows you to identify the required information. So the types of data to be used for training and predictions are identified. For example, for a self-driving car, it could include the identification of the need for the radar, videos, and laser imaging detection and ranging, which is leader data. In short, it is LiDAR and we do call them as like laser imaging, we got detection, we got um, uh, range, ranging, etc. So it puts together and say the LiDAR is something what we really look forward to have with us. And that helps you to 
get the identification done that, okay, this is what I need to capture or acquire in order to feed a ML model. Next is gathering. Of course, once you have identified the data, all you need to start doing is gathering the information to support that. Now, the source of the data is identified and the means for collecting the data are determined. For example, this could include the identification of the International Monetary Fund, which is IMF, as a source for financial data and the channels that will be used to submit the data into the AI-based system. So, Gathering is more about reaching out to the standard organizations if you think you have one to support or you might be preparing yourself then you will still have a library of information where you can get the valid set of data to train the ML model, right? So you need to find out that source of uh, information, that source uh, which helps you to get the required set of data, right? It could be internal, it could be external, it could be a standard body, but all you need to do is find out that source and collect. The third is of course labeling and we are just referring here that labeling we will be talking in 4.5 so just support me here. We'll come back to it and deep dive there and refer it back to the 4.1. So yes 4.5 is completely dedicated to the level uh, labeling of the uh, test data or sorry the data required for training the ML and that's the reason it will be covered there. Now the acquired data can be various form. It can be in any form, including numerical, categorical, images, tabular, text, time series, sensors, geospatical, uh, videos and audios. So there are several ways by which you can train an ML model and depends on uh, what exactly do you need according to your AI based system, right? Sometimes you do have a kind of capture based uh, outputs so those could be images. And when you talk about pictures, when Google asks you to verify yourself, you generally are provided with some pictures of taxis, uh, bridges, uh, you know, <laughs> zebra crossings and a lot of many other things. So you talk about the images too. And similarly, you know, you do have numerical values. You do have categorical things that, hey, which one of these are cats, not the dogs. So depending on things, you can certainly uh, categorize your data in different forms, uh, which would help you to train your ML model according to the label. And that's something, the beginning of that. Talking about the next segment on the data preparation is, of course, data pre-processing. Of course, do not expect all your data to be well ready ahead of time in order to go ahead and feed it to the ML model. It just just doesn't happen that you are kind of like acquiring data from some source and it might be absolutely in the form which you can directly use to train your ML model. Sometimes you use production data which you need to clean, you need to scrub, and then you need to make use of it because there might be a lot of unwanted information which could be misguiding or misleading your ML model. So pre-processing contains those set of activities which you really need to perform to prepare the data in the form that you can present it to the ML model right it's not necessary that for example when you talk about dimensions you talk about the pixels you talk about the sizing the font style the font text a lot many other things like that so the very first thing here we got is uh, cleaning where incorrect data duplicate data or outliers are identified they are either removed or corrected in addition data imputation may be used to replace missing data values with estimated or guessed values for example, using mean, median, or mode values. The removal or anonymization of the personal information may also be performed. So I think all the points are very, very straightforward. First of all, you're looking forward to remove the invalid set of information which is not required, which is incorrect, duplicate, etc. Or you may be looking forward to talk about the missing data. Sometimes you may have partial information available or some of the values are skipped then you need to um, intuit, you need to guess what exactly should be the appropriate value here and you can replace it with any of your intuitions. And at the same time, if you think you are using any kind of PII, which is personal identification information, then they need to be masked or they need to be anonymized so that it's not you know, boycotting or kind of like contradicting with the GDPR concepts. Second is the transformation. The format of the given data is changed, which means breaking an address 
held as a string into its constituents parts, dropping a field, holding a random identifier, converting categorical data into numerical data, changing image formats. Now, of course, second is transformation. So you might have, for example, if you're talking about images, right, you might have collected 1000 images and all of them are in kind of like JPG. But in order to train the ML model, you need to convert that into PNG, which is without the background so that the ML model doesn't get confused with anything else behind the object which they need to learn about. So in that context, I might be removing the background and saving them as PNG. And that's what the transformation is talking about. Similarly, if you talk about anything else, could be the numerical data, uh, could be in the decimal form, and the decimal values could be up to four decimal values. So you may be looking forward to train the model with up to two decimal values. So you need to transform that for sure. Some of the transformation applied on numerical data include scaling to ensure that the same range is used. Standardization, for example, rescales data to ensure it takes a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. The normalization ensures that the data has a range between zero to one. Uh, kind of like, again, these are mathematical calculations when you talk about the numerical values, the standard deviation, the mean, the median, and all this sort of thing gets into comparison here. And uh, the mean should be zero and uh, of course, a standard deviation of one. Now, if you really want to understand back again that what does mean and standard deviation means, I think you need to go back to your academics and uh, drill down what did you learn in your statistics sessions uh, in your mathematics, right? But I think given that everyone here is very knowledgeable and uh, we are talking about something really experienced, then it certainly makes sense. Talking about argumentation, which is... Uh, used to increase the number of samples in a data set. Argumentation can also be used to include adversarial examples in the training data, providing robustness against adversarial attacks. That means uh, the synonyms and the duplicates kind of thing, like similar kind of images, similar kind of um, text and values uh, should be used because of the number of sample data. For example, again, if I have to refer it to a kind of like a German suffered dog, right? I must use different angles, different types of images of the German Shepherd so that the model can understand by any means that yes, this is German Shepherd, right? Because I should not be using just a standard static image that, hey, this is what a German Shepherd looking like, but you may use kind of like 10 different images of German Shepherd, which would make him understand, like make the ML model understand from any angle that yes, this is it's exactly German Shepherd. So you need to augment the data and create different samples of it so that the model can learn it very well. And finally, the sampling part, of course, this involves selection of some part of the total available data set so that the pattern in the larger data set can be observed. This is typically done to reduce the cost and time needed to create the ML model. So of course, uh, sampling is uh, not about like feeding in with the comparing everything what you have, you need to pick up the right shortlisted set of data, which would be very, very critical and unique for um, the ML model to understand. At the same time, you're reducing the time required to train the model. In simple words, what I mean here is, if you got 500 set of images to train the ML model, you consume, for example, 60 days to train the ML model, for example. Now, if in case, sorry, I, I meant 60 hours, not 60 days. So <laughs> instead of using 500 data sets, rather you are sampling some of the information and calling out as 100 images, right? And that you can finish in kind of like, you know, uh, 20 hours of time, which is significant enough, right? So you don't really uh, look forward to use all possible things what you have with you. You do rather sample and use the precise and unique things which would make sense to the ML model and reduce your effort. At the same time, uh, you do go ahead with uh, required limited set of information, what should you train with. But of course, don't forget that training the ML model is different. And while you train the model, you see the preciseness of the output. If you think that uh, the ML model is not returning the right outputs, then you use the remaining set of data in the next iteration, right? The epochs, different 
iterations, the different iterations of data feeding would be done as per the accuracy in the outcomes. So put together, this is the part one of the discussion. We do have a few more things to discuss, so stay tuned for that. We'll be coming back to you in the next tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.